So can I start? Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. So the topic is NVMe pass through and about making it more useful. And we would we would be talking a lot about Euring command as well. So so this whole thing is is at high level it's a combination of Euring command plus NVMe pass through. And uh, maybe for the people who haven't had, had had a look at the patches, maybe this is a bit of a uh, uh, overview of things, uh, gist of uh, stuff. So Euring command is is the is the facility which is about limiting the the Euring capability for for any command exposed by maybe any any underlying component, could be driver, could be file system, could be maybe network. And with the NVMe pass through, we we anyway allow. Uh, any uh, any arbitrary command, and with the generic air interface in NVMe, which is dev and dev ngx, with that we 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 just make sure that this interface is always available. But then currently it is it is driven by by the sync IOFTL, and the idea is to is to change that and have it up, uh, have it have it done. Uh, with the Euring command, and that's that's going to be the first use case. But I have been hearing people are talking about other possibilities. Uh, I, I heard one uh, uh, from the user space block driver folks, and I think that the, the the big CPE may unlock a couple of other possibilities as well because we would be able to uh, return additional results. So uh, maybe if you look at this picture, the elements are are we are having a regular SQE which is 64 bytes. What we what we are adding the new thing here is is the big SQE that that Jens already added, uh, and this one is a combination of two regular SQEs, so overall 128 uh, 128 bytes. What this gives us is is uh, 80 bytes of space, which you can see over here. 16 is coming from the first one, and 64 is coming from the second, and we can use all of it to place the async command in line into this particular. Uh, big SQE, and then the application is going to submit it by using a new new code, which is IORing OP URing command, and and then then uh, you know when we talk about the communication between IORing and uh, the uh, the uh, the underlying layer, which is it's going to be happening with this with this callback URing command, the the file op, and it would be taking uh, struct IORing command. That's another structure, but this is this is you know internal to kernel. And then, then yeah, and we will do what what it does. Uh, the thing here is that we we are we we we, we, we wouldn't be using the existing uh, opcode for the for the sync one. Rather, we would be using a new one, and we using command IO at this moment. Um, and then yeah, whenever um, so so the submission path would be done um, just after the submission, and whenever the IO whenever this this particular command gets completed. NVMe is supposed to call IURing command done, and when it does that, uh, we would we would be returning the the normal result into CQE, the first CQE anyway. But we also needed to have another result, and for that we are talking about having the big CQE. So uh, the secondary CQE would be having 16 bytes of space. So um, that actually means that we have two eight bytes of you know fields. Currently we would be using only one, but but Probably it can be used for some some other use cases as well. And if you look at the code structures, maybe currently this is the same thing that, but but probably in the form of some code here. So the IU ring SQE, it's it's uh, it's uh, going to take a command op, and it could be could be the the operation that we want to turn into a sync. Um, so in this case, it's going to be NVMe using command IO. The command length. I think I would probably be deleting it, but then if we want to be a little more generic, probably we would say that this is the command length, and it can be anything uh, uh, under 80 bytes. And the last one is is the part where we we say that we are going to place the command uh, over here. So this is the starting offset, and we can place the the 80 bytes of command into this. And yes, so IU ring is going to prepare the right hand side stru structure which is IURing command and once it builds it it's going to call the file op async command and in NVMe we would be uh, for this particular callback for, for, I mean for this particular handler we would be 
supporting the yielding command IO. And currently, I think we are taking the pass through command 64, but probably uh, we, can, we can discuss maybe whether it makes sense to even change that and probably reduce it by, at least by eight bytes and call it something else, probably uh, struct NVMe IO ring command or something like that. Kanchan, uh, John has a question on Zoom. What's the difference between a big SQE and a fuse command? Sorry? What is the difference between a big SQE and a fuse command? A big SQE and fuse bit? And a fuse command. Ah, no connection. I mean, no connection. Fuse command. So big SQE is, we're talking about uh, at the IU ring level and fuse command is at the NVMe level. So currently, no connection at all. So, so, this, this, so this, 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 the, the big SQE construct is at the IU ring level. And uh, yeah, um, coming to the to the to the uh, to the upstream plans. So, I think we we probably can can have uh, as as for you know five dot nineteen probably we can take uh, big SQE big CQE during command, and then we may have a pass through, maybe the non vectored and vector version. And once that is that is merged, I think we can we can plan the uh, bunch of other things, which which came uh, some of. These things came during reviews, uh, and I think yeah we we can we can uh, we can line it up later. Polling, admin pass through, multipath, maybe biocast or pmap buffers, and that is all. That is all I have. Um, questions. You got that? Yeah. Oh, boom. Um, for multipath, um, so today, for example, for uh, SCSI pass through through DM, um, pass through commands don't get retried on other paths due to a path failure. So, what were you planning to do here? So, so the way I see I mean, is no, there's no implementation for it. All that it does is it picks, you know, um, essentially the last known good path and sends the command down it. But it won't retry it once there is. So I'm curious what you were thinking of doing. Yeah, so, so at this point, at this point, so um, if you look at the pass-through interface currently, uh, even, even the sync one, uh, we do not really have any retry mechanism at this point. So uh, if you send the IOCTAL, it, it basically, you know, um, does whatever it can and then if uh, if it fails, it fails. It basically goes to user, user space, and the user space can can retry. And I think in the first round, we will probably go ahead with the same model. And um, and yeah, maybe subsequently we can see whether we can try, we can do something about maybe retry or retuning and stuff. Okay. So what I would suggest is, um, if you don't intend to do any retrying, if you could put a comment or something in the code to that effect, um, saying that this is a deliberate design choice until you decide to implement something differently. Because it turns out a lot of people thought that commands are getting retried on SCSI, but they're not. I don't think you ever want to do retry on pass through stuff, right? You get well, a result. The thing is that you, you occasionally done. don't yeah. have a choice. Um, because depending on where you d submit your I.O., it might or might not be retried. And uh, we only have the uh, notion that commands will not be retried and Opalize will have to handle whatever the fallout is. Turns out, upper layers do not handle it. Well, there's oh, no upper well layer here, right? That's the application doing yeah. the I/O. So, this is the definition of the pass-through interface in SCSI, yeah. in NVMe, and we're not going to add any new semantics here. We're just going to match the semantics of the existing synchronous uh, pass-through I/O. And because we really need to match the semantics, we need to do multipathing for 219C. But it should be trivial. It really should be trivial because you basically just, honestly, I don't know how you get away without even doing the path selection. And that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. I think my main point was just I would hate for the driver to try and attempt. There's no defined semantics for retry of pass-through, right? Could, you know, what's, what's the command? It depends on that, so. 
but yeah, for the multi-pass selection, if it's trivial to do, then might as well just get it done. So for the for the admin pass too, didn't did, what is the reason for not including it in the first pass that's going into the kernel? I would, I mean, if so if I one of the main use cases I see of this is attaching a PDK and then use the SPDK and then use it as a backend. Um, but I would imagine SPDK would love to have the admin pass through. Um, Just nobody nobody here cares about SPDK, so we don't I enable uh, that use case. I, I forgot that. Boo this man. Yes. <laughs> Just, just use the sync IOCTO. Usually just mechanism. provisioning stuff for most other things. So nobody really cares. So, Anshan, do you happen to have any performance numbers? Uh, against what? Uh, against a regular IO. Uh, yes, yes. I think I do not have it right now, but, but I... I posted some in the in the cover letter, uh, and what would you like to see? Would you like? I mean, what do you expect? I mean, do you have? So, so the way I see it, I think the numbers are good. Uh, the, the, this whole thing, if we compare it with the sync, definitely it's going to be better. But uh, when we are comparing it with the with the uh, uh, with the you know regular uh, direct block I, I using path. It is, it is it is comparable at this point. Of course, it doesn't have all the features. I mean, all the features of the uh, of the regular path, and uh, but but the numbers are good at this point. So, and so Daniel, I think the point is that it scales. I think it, it's that it scales linearly just as normally read and write. So I think that's what what you want to say. So, so for if I'm not doing SPDK, doing some other application, then in that case. If, if I don't have the admin pass through, I would have to open another, like the char device, and then get a pass. I know, but if I didn't want to. For which part? For which part? So no matter if it's sick or not. So you're saying we would need, always need to open both? So this one currently, the, the, the one that you see over here, that's for the namespace, and this is for IO pass through. And for admin, you would be having it in a separate handler. It's, it's, it's basically simple. It's just that, I mean, the, it's a conscious attempt to probably make it lightweight so that it's easy to review. Uh, and I think if I, if I probably borrow the words of the store, set the basics right first. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah. Uh, so I mean, the, the attempt actually is to not to make it super heavyweight and you know, go nowhere. But but it's feasible. I mean, it's it's actually very easy to wire up uh, admin pass through. I mean, you can always just if we assume that the the stuff you have listed there gets staged for five nineteen, nothing stops you from just posting feature patches for the other stuff, right? And that gets looked at and reviewed independently, and maybe some of it will make five nineteen too, right? or maybe waits for 520. Um, yeah. It's just, I think, important. I like how you split it in like the core bits, right? This is core functionality. This is the bare minimum we need to do. Take a look at that, get a review, right? Get that stage for upstream, and then take a look at some of the more advanced or you know different features. Yeah. I mean, even for 519, we're kind of running out of time. So please get a new patch set out to be reviewed as soon as possible. I'm pretty sure we will do at least another cycle on it based on your feedback. So get that out quickly. Do the admin commands right after. They're kind of not critical, but at the same time useful and trivial. And the rest, we can slowly work on it until performance is good. Yeah, I think for, so the bits you had on, if you go to the next slide, I think the polling support right would be nifty, but clearly that can that can totally wait. And the same with the bio cache and pmap buffers, right? Those are like, we'll look at those later. Um, the other two are more important, but I agree. Just get the patch set, the new version posted. We can do another round review, and hopefully that'll that'll be it. If we can queue it up next week, right? Then we can still make it. If it misses next week, right? Then it'll, then it's all going to be 520, I think, at this point. 
Chief. I have a question about security. How will it be prevented that someone uh, modifies the firmware of the device uh, using a pass-through um, for someone who shouldn't do that? I think, uh, could, you, could, you, could you elaborate the question? Did you say security? I, I think I... Yeah, the, the, there's the same issue with SCSI. I mean, you can do yeah. weird things so, there too. So short answer, security model is exactly the same as the existing pass-through actuals. The security model there right now is it's all caps as admin, unlike SCSI where we have a white list of a bunch of commands where we don't require it. So if you, assuming we're implementing the admin pass-through, which, which is gonna happen, I mean, you, you need to be privileged to send any admin commands and the firmware updates in NVMe, totally unrelated of what we do on the pass-through session by the vendors are usually, unless someone really fucks up, required to be signed. So you need to have a privileged process and even that privileged process to any of the pass-through interfaces could at best update to another signing firmware from the vendor. And I know a lot of vendors have some kind of downgrade protection to deal with a case where you want to reintroduce a security bug. The important for this patch, of the, right, is the same security model as we already have, right? There's absolutely no difference. It's just an async model of the same. Thank you, then I uh, appreciate the, the comments and uh, uh, the feedback. Can you do bit buckets with this? <laughs> <laughs> bit bucket? <laughs> Partial sector reads. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't I think I it would <laughs> actually work, but it's. <laughs> I never came here. I never saw your slide. <laughs> I don't know what subsystem. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. All right. At four o'clock, the file system people are going to be joining us to talk about unique file system identifiers slash NVMe identifiers.